humans, were only recently starting to take their first steps into the cosmos, and were still not interesting enough to draw the attention of the more powerful races. Sure, their technology was expanding greatly with each new race they encountered, but a full grasp of the more advanced race's tech was decades, or maybe even centuries off. To this end, the humans still had the bulky and massive gravity systems attached to their ships. These systems, though usually more massive than the ships they were installed on, helped generate artificial gravity and dampen the effects of inertia during manoeuvring and acceleration and deceleration. Their ships looked awkward, like a series of metal rods all fused together along a central axis, and the gravity system hung on the top, or front if your orientation prefers, like a giant oversized donut. The humans maintained the same basic design of their ships even after acquiring the newer technology because, as they put it, why fix what isn't broken? The original design of the human ships was necessary to generate artificial gravity through centrifugal force. Though they no longer spun their ships, humanity likened their unique ships as a hallmark of human design. In the parts of space that humans are currently exploring, there is another race of beings, the Aquili. They are usually avoided by other races because of their aggressive and often parasitic nature. This race was described by humans as pirate octo jellyfish, for the similarity to several aquatic species found on Earth, as well as their tactics. The Aquili descended from an aquatic species and thrived in low or zero gravity environments. This meant that their ships require smaller gravity systems and could focus more energy towards movement and speed. During one encounter, the humans in their awkward tube ship are trying their hardest to blast across the galaxy to the nearest star system when they are preyed upon by the Aquili. The Aquili ship opted for the tried and true tactic of disabling the oversized gravity system with a few expertly placed laser pulses before latching their ship directly onto the hull of their prey. The Aquili know that this tactic works most often because most spirits favoring species rely heavily on gravity and quickly become disoriented in microgravity. Their aquatic and zero gravity nature have given them great advantages in boarding attacks. This time though, this time was different. As soon as the Aquili disabled the gravity system, the humans went quiet. No more shots were fired. No more evasive maneuvers were taken. No broadcasts of mercy or their help were sent out. It was as if the humans gave up as soon as the gravity left. This was unusual because humans had already shown a strong affinity for fighting back, and with bodies trained for such high gravity, they were quite a dangerous prey. Perhaps the key life support system was tied to the gravity system, and they had all been accidentally killed. Scans still showed life signs aboard the craft. No one was moving much, so perhaps they had decided to surrender, but had not broadcast this intent. No matter. The boarding procedure was about to begin. The Aquili ship pulled alongside the human ship, behind the massive disabled gravity drive, and sent down their long prehensile docking arms to pull the two ships together. The Aquili, or wearing specialised gear to help them survive the human atmosphere, waited until the breach tubes opened before pouring into the human ship in an overwhelming crowd of tendrils, tentacles and tube-like arms. As soon as the whole boarding party was aboard the human ship, disaster struck. With a huge groan and a screech of metal, the human ship had fired all of its lateral vectoring thrusters in the same direction. The roar was deafening across both atmospheres of the last ships. With all the thrusters firing in a single direction, the human ship began to spin around on its own central axis. The equally were thrown across each room they currently occupied and made a loud, wet smacking sound as each of them were dropped unceremoniously to the floors of the human ship. The docking arms of the Aquili ship used bars to remain secure and could not be disengaged under such strong gravitational forces. The Aquili ship was now stuck to the human ship until the humans decided it was ready to let them go. The humans kept the thrusters firing and drove the spin faster and faster until two full human gravities was achieved. The humans found this uncomfortable, of course, but the Aquili were now completely helpless and unable to activate or even aim their weapons. The human crew took this opportunity to sweep both ships and collect the entire Aquili crew prisoner. The humans found it quite humorous that the load of old buckets kept in the cargo bay served as adequate prisoner transport cells as the sweep of the ships was done. Just pick them up, remove the blaster ring, put them in the bucket and put the lid on. No species in the recorded history of Aquili attacks had ever defeated and imprisoned an entire Aquili crew using gravity as a only weapon before. Perhaps humans won't need to advance their technology to elicit the interest of the greater galactic races after all.